All right, everybody. So today is uh, Monday, April 11th. And here is what we are going to do. We're going to go over our uh, schedule for the spring semester, because like I said in the uh, voice message I left everyone this morning, there's going to be a nice surprise coming up. If you, if you haven't uh, taken a look at the schedule recently, you'll see a nice surprise. So then we'll uh, review the homework assigned for last week. And then we'll discuss the end of the semester because it's coming up pretty fast after April, then May, and uh, we wrap up in June. Then we'll take a nice 10 minute break and I'll introduce uh, some resume writing. Those of you who were here last semester remember this. And then we'll finish up class with chapter three vocabulary, a nice long vocab review. Uh, any questions? I try to find a schedule in uh, Google <clears throat> Classroom, but I, I, I can't. No problem. Yeah. I'll show you exactly where it is right now. Okay. Here okay. we go. So I'm leaving the slides bye bye slides let's go into google classroom here is the schedule so the last time i posted the i reposted the schedule i think it was about a month ago <clears throat> it's further down here in the stream and a there it is there it is oh whoops well this is our regular class schedule uh -huh. but the uh the schedule with the attachment is Pardon me, it was a while ago that I posted that and I'll repost it to make sure it's at the top. There it is, the academic calendar. I'll repost this to make sure it's at the top. So here is the academic calendar. Mm. All right, and don't worry, I'll repost this as well. <clears throat> so the our academic calendar. So we started in January. Then we did February, March, and here we are on April 11th. So mm -hmm. tell me what you see coming up with. A boy. Yeah. 18 to 22 boy. There we go. So that's it. So this coming Friday, uh, there is a holiday, so I'm not going to post any assignments for you. I'm not going to send you any messages, tell you any, give you anything to do. And this entire week, which, which holiday? Have, this is a Good Friday. It's called uh, oh. the Friday before Easter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this yeah. is Easter Sunday right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is called Patriots Day, the 18th. Can I? Can and I ask something? Can you what? Can I can I ask something? Sure. Um, is there and what that what is the relation is there with the X? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. Good question. <laughs> oh, Easter eggs. <laughs> is there and and you know I I see kind of X, um, colorful. You mean eggs? E G G S. Yeah. Oh, Easter eggs. Okay. Um, I honestly don't know where that <laughs> came from. Um, I really have no idea. Uh, but uh, so Easter is a Christian holiday. Yeah. Uh, it is a federal holiday. Um, for Christians, it's the day of the celebrate the resurrection. But the non-religious aspects... You, you could call it like uh, Santa Claus for Christmas, I guess. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. I guess that, that's my only explanation for it. It's like, um, yeah, it, it's, it's the non-religious part of Easter, mm. I guess. Yeah. I, and I, it's a fantastic question. I have no idea where... <laughs> Um, it came from I have absolutely no idea but you know it's such a good question I'm going to do a quick search where did Easter eggs come from 
what is the Easter Bunny? I really have no idea. But yeah, it is a, okay, I'm just going to look, tradition of Easter egg hunting. Why is it a rabbit? It's a egg. Yeah. Why? <laughs> that is great. I, I uh, asked my I really husband no the last day. He is um, from Boston here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he told me, I don't know. Oh, wait, I think I see some explanation. Hold on a second. Okay, okay, I, I, I'm gonna go with this one. It's on the History Channel. I'm gonna send this to the chat. Mm -hmm. This might be, this might be more fun than going over the vocabulary. It's just reading this article from the History Channel. Okay, I'm gonna send this, uh, I'm gonna put a note, I'm sending this to the chat. Let, I'm gonna say, let me know if you wanna go over this in class today. If you want to go over this together in class. Okay, so there it is. All right. Uh, it's just an article from the History Channel. It says Easter symbols and traditions. Boom. Okay. And I haven't read the article. It's just um, something from the History Channel. It seems to give some explanation to that question. I have, other than that, I really don't know. Hmm. Great, great question. Easter. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So there it is. So, yes. Uh, Friday is called Good Friday, uh, and then Sunday is Easter Sunday, Monday is Patriots Day, and then following the Boston Public School schedule, you will not, we will not be teaching any classes the 19th, 20th, 20, uh, 19th through the uh, 22nd. So that's that. So we're gonna have a nice long, long, long break. Is everybody it's a great excited news to have a nice break? Me, teacher. What's that? It's a, great, it's a great news for me because next week I'm going to to travel to Brazil. Oh, very good. <laughs> yes, and uh, no class is good for me. Very good. I'm also gonna be doing a little road trip with my family, but not. I'm not going as far as Brazil. I'm. Uh, we're gonna be driving to uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. and then uh, New York and New Jersey, just a few days nice. traveling. Yeah. Anybody else have some travel plans coming up for the holiday, for the, for the break? Work. That's good. You got to make that money. Yeah. 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 Um, That's right. <laughs> so anybody, anybody now scrambling to find uh, something to do with your kids, not knowing that the Boston Public Schools will be <laughs> closed on these days, the 18th, 19th to the 22nd? I wonder if some of, some of you are saying, uh-oh, my kids are going to be home. What do I do now? <laughs> I don't okay. have kids anymore. <laughs> I, and and look at and and you, I, I I we can tell the look on your face. You're just like so carefree, like <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> ooh life is good. What yes, it's <laughs> true. Well, <laughs> says, all right, well, sure I can go to Brazil. Why not? It doesn't matter. Yeah, Brazil, sure. Why not? Yeah. Let's do that. No problem. All right, I'll tell my, my son is seven now. I'll tell him to get a job, wrap this, speed this thing up. <laughs> so yes, so that's that's coming up. And uh, ooh, whoops, open up the academic calendar again. So this is how fast the semester ends. Um, once we come back, uh, we finish up in May. Really the May is when, uh, we, this is when we have, you know, full, classes with full assignments and then uh right about here the last week in may i start doing end of semester interviews to talk to everybody see how they're feeling if they um feel like they're ready to move up to level six or whatever everybody's uh you know doing i'll, I'll catch up with everybody to see you know overall how do you feel about the class uh 
How do you feel about the program? All of those things. So that's when we have the end of semester conversations. Uh, we will do the resume workshop again. Several of you did that last semester. And June, we're basically done. Uh, June, right about here, there's not a lot of uh, academic work. It's really just, uh, we have a graduation for our level six students. Uh, and that's when we, uh, you know, give them that push onto college or to a vocational training program. And uh, then we will figure out who's remaining in level five, who's moving on to level six. And really that last week, there's not a lot of academic work. It's just checking in with everybody, making sure everybody's doing okay. So once we have this vacation, we really only have about five more weeks of real classes. So that's how fast this semester goes. And um, yeah, so finish strong. If anybody is, what that means is if, if anybody, most of you have been fantastic. You've kept up with all your assignments. You've been showing up to class. You've been absolutely wonderful, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, if there's anybody who's been struggling keeping up with assignments, uh, right about now is that time to catch up with any previous work, ask me questions about what's uh, anything you're missing, all that stuff. If you have uh, an idea for a career change, anything going on, if, um, if you've recently lost your job and you're looking for work, definitely let me know because we can... Uh, put a few eyes and ears out there. And that's about it. So that's the, what it looks like at the end of the semester. Any questions about uh, the academic calendar? In, uh, in July, there are no classes? Uh, we do have classes that start up in July to August. It's about a short, very short summer session. Oh. Yeah, we um, the summer session begins right after July 4th. July 3rd until. Oh, uh, no, no, July 4th. It's after July 4th. After. Oh. Yeah, so we, we start uh, the summer session. It's really about a little more than a month. It starts uh, July 4th. And I believe it goes to about, I'm sorry, July 5th. No, 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 no. Uh, June? What date is, hold on, let me look at the calendar here. What date is July 4th, 4th of July weekend fall this year? Okay, so um, 4th of July this year is going to be on a Monday. Whenever the 4th of July holiday is over, uh, then we will start the summer session after the July 4th holiday. And then we usually go into the second week of August. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, then we take another break and we start the fall semester again in September. Okay. It is a level is uh, two semesters or one semester? I'm sorry, what's two semesters? Yeah, my question is each level um, had two semesters or one semester? That depends on uh, the person, on the person? That depends on the person. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people need more, some people need less. Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody's different. Good question. Anybody else um, have questions about the academic calendar? So yeah, this is, it's, it is the El Centro. Uh, adult ed calendar, but our calendar follows Boston Public Schools because we're we're funded by the Department of Secondary Education, so we follow the Boston Public School schedule. All right, so let's move on. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to well, I'll post that at the top again later to make it easier for everybody. Anyway, let's go over. The assignment. Okay. So yes, I see a lot of people did some great work uh, on this last assignment right here. And I'll open it up pages 85 and 86. I'm going to switch to my document camera. 
right now. Uh, let's open up to page 85 in the textbook. All right. There it is. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got my document camera up. And I'll zoom in right here. And also grab my pen. Okay, ready to go. So the title of this article is Mind Control and the Internet. All right. And zooming in a little closer. Uh, let's uh, identify some volunteers. Who is in the mood for uh, reading today? Practicing their reading. Teacher, me. Which page All right, Natalia I... is ready. Uh, Nat I can <laughs> tell you was jumping out of her skin. There we go. Okay, Natalia, <laughs> you can. Okay, Natalia. Yeah. No, this Which is a nice page? long paragraph. Say it again. Which page? Page. Oh, uh, page eighty-five. 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 And for paragraph two, who else wanted to read? Yeah. Okay. Let's. Okay. It's great. I see Marie's hand up, and also Nurexi and uh, Tatiana. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's do it this way. Um, Marie Lombard, uh, and then these are longer paragraphs. So if uh, anybody gets stuck or you just want someone else to take over halfway through, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, Marie Lombard, uh, Tatiana, and Nerexi. So mm -hmm. I'll give it Marie Lombard, second paragraph, Tatiana, Suspuedes for the third paragraph and the fourth paragraph will give to Norexi. Fifth paragraph is open. Would anybody like it? Okay, we'll just, maybe I'll read the fifth paragraph. We'll just see who's feeling, who's in the mood when we get there. All right. Oh, Fride. Fride, you got it. Let's see Fride's hand up. Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Faride, you're so lucky. Look how short that paragraph is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> she chose the little paragraph. Okay. Easy. Okay. Oh, yes. And uh, Tavares is out of the car and joining us. Fantastic. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, Natalia, I'm going to zoom in on the camera here. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. In in, in its inaugural days, the Good. web was a strange, eclectic collection of personal or home pages. Home pages, a king of digital kind, oh, kind of kind of digital world art that did not really own main. Uh, Main rely, street. rely on. I rely on. <laughs> Main you got street. it. You got it. <laughs> Media companies or corporate cash, and was not driving by commercial 
interest, but I then con, con mercy, commerce, mm -hmm. commerce moved in almost by accident when Larry Page and Sergey Bring bring the mm -hmm. the duo duo who, is, duo who started Google, Google. Re, reluctantly 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 pirate sm, small ads with their masterful search engine as a way to find it it was not their intent at first to create the largest largest global advertising platform in the history of the world but that is what happened right the world blender in an email and the next set of at you are likely to see will be for warning and oster search for Where for an oster <laughs> search, search for for information on bipolar disease and drugs ads will pop up when you are reading baseball scores all right since these are very good, since these are longer paragraphs, what I'd like to do right here is, is ask, can anybody summarize this in a few words? When you see a really, really long paragraph like this, it's mm. good to just think about the most important aspect. What is this about? So we know it starts off saying the internet in its early days was just a bunch of random stuff. Essentially, um, a little history here. Uh, the internet uh, came about during the Cold War. Uh, for instance, the first, uh, who could tell me what this is? I think that, that was created for, for uh, doing advertising. Well, who could tell me what this, this word is right here? Electronic mail. Oh. Just it's not in the paragraph. Who could guess what this means? El, electronic information? No. What do you think this is? The very first electronic mail was sent in 1967. I went uh, from a computer in UCLA to another computer. I believe it was MIT or somewhere else. What does electronic mail mean? Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> Who said it? Is the for the same information? No, no, no. Just the word electronic mail. It means this. Uh, email. Oh, email. Email. Yeah. Email. 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 Yeah. Email. Um, so the first, the internet was actually created by a group called, that still exists. It's called ARPA, A R P A, and this stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency. It still exists today, uh, but this is when the U.S. and Soviet Union were uh, competing for technology advances. Uh, it's part of the space race, you know. The Soviets built the first uh, satellite, 1957, Sputnik shot up into space. Eventually, the Americans wanted to catch up. And part of this, um, part of this race to catch up with the Soviet Union was to develop new technology. And uh, the military, combined with a lot of researchers at American universities, created a way to share information between one computer and the next. <clears throat> um, the reason for this is simple. Uh, it's a way to store information. In the, when the America was worrying about a war with Russia, they wanted to store information safely. Think about it. If uh, you're under the threat of a bomb being dropped on you at any time, 
what's the safest way to store it to keep it to keep it important information? Lock it on, on the cloud. Exactly, the cloud. We call it the cloud now, but essentially <clears throat> that's what the idea of the internet is. It was a way to keep very uh, critical information safe. So for instance, let's say, uh, what are, where in your house, where do you keep important information? You know, do you keep it in a box? Do you keep it in a file folder? Yeah, box, file folder. Right, right, right. So what if something bad happens? What if the house burns down? You what lose happens? everything. You lose everything, <laughs> exactly. So the idea is to keep a place that's intangible, I means you can't touch it. So now we, this is normal to us now, you save something in the cloud, you photocopy something, email it to yourself, uh, keep it in a cloud, whatever. All that essentially was the, was the idea of the internet. And the reason it was called a net was because it was literally a net from one computer to the next. And it kind of looked like that, like a spider web. <laughs> so it was, you know, a computer at MIT sends a message to the computer at Dartmouth University, to a computer at NYU, to a computer at the University of Chicago. And it would just be a, it would start to look like a spider web. And they called it a, a net <clears throat> because all it was was just sharing information between computers and retrieving it when you needed it at its most basic form. That's what the internet is. Um, it's So a way to think of the internet, it's just an intangible storage, storage of information that you can't touch, physically touch, like touch with our hands. Like um, this book, if, this, if I lose this book, what's a way to keep it? Copy the pages and you know, put it in the cloud, email it to myself, whatever. So that's essentially what the internet is. Uh, it was it was really just a, exclusive to the military in the 60s and 70s. In the 1980s, it became a little bit more uh, a little bit more experimented with, but only among computer programmers, like people who worked in the business. It was really the 1990s where the general public in most de in developed countries started using internet technology and of course it was very slow and that's really where this began say the 1990s when internet technology really the mid to late 90s internet technology is being used by the general public and it was just a big mess it was like finding information in the internet uh, without a proper search engine is like digging through a, a, a <laughs> you ever go to the beach and look in the sand? Look at the sand, you said? Yeah, look at the sand and the beach. Yep. Yes. So imagine you, imagine you put something in the sand and the beach, like you, you drop a coin, you drop a, your watch, you drop anything in the beach in the sand and how do you, how do you retrieve it later? It'd be messy. It'd just be a, it'd be ridiculous. So that's kind of what the internet was in the early days, and that's what this, that's what this first part of the paragraph is. In its inaugural days, inaugural means like early beginning. The web was strange, eclectic. It just means all kind of random stuff. Strange and eclectic collection of personal home pages. So just very random, sophisticated computer programmers would build websites and that was the internet. Totally random, only a few people are really using it. Mm -hmm. and, it was, and if you wanted to find something in particular that you were looking for, it was really, really hard. So how did Google change everything? Right at the bottom of the paragraph, it talks about the beginning of so what's what what's a change with Google? Um they changed it um 
with introduction of the mm -hmm. the ads yeah at, at first it was by mistake like they it wasn't supposed they wasn't um uh, they, they weren't trying to to put ads um mm -hmm. on the on the net mm -hmm. but it was with the with the, with the ads that everything took a a new um a new dimension exactly exactly google the google is today it makes a lot of different things it's a huge company but originally the the service was to make a search engine a search engine <clears throat> if you're searching for something on the internet it can help you find that thing you're looking for if you're shopping if you're traveling if you're doing your schoolwork <clears throat> google was one of the earlier search engines there were there were others but google it worked a little bit better than uh you might who are, you might remember uh netscape those early search engines and their competitors today was google like bing or a uh, dog pile baidu they're different search engines today but google tends to work very very well but how does google make a lot of money you don't pay money every time you type something into google so how do they how do they make money they with the data that mm -hmm. so they um they have data from uh, every aspect of yes. uh, consumer and they sell it and buy it so it's, yes yeah beautiful mm -hmm. i think perla I, I you were about to say something similar I mean, I'm sorry, Tatiana, you, you, you were saying something similar? Yeah, advertising. Advertising, yes. So, um, yeah, the example here is if you, uh, if you type bipolar disease, you'll get ads for medications. If you type uh, blender, you'll get ads for, you know, home appliances, things like that. And they'll come up whenever you're on the internet. So uh, you're your search and history will follow you at random and uh there's a there's a great <clears throat> there's a, a writer named um scott galloway he's a, he's a professor at nyu um he he says he argues that google knows more about us than uh we do more about us than we do or close close personal friends because everything that come often anything that comes into your mind you put into Google. <laughs> so sometimes it, whatever happens to be on your mind that day, you put in Google and then Google will collect the information about you. And sometimes you'll receive an ad for something and say, hey, how do they know I want that? Or hey, exactly. how do they know that's what I was thinking? It's over time, everything that you give them will add up and Google search, uh, search engine will eventually have a very uh, um, almost very personal relationship with you <laughs> know exactly what you're thinking at what time what you want when and that's essentially how, exactly how they want it but that can be very problematic <laughs> and that's what we're going to get into with the next paragraph uh marie are you ready yes okay targeted ads marie. targeted ads may seem harmless enough after all, if there, if there is going to be advertising, isn't it better if is it for products and services that might be useful? But to pull you into a transaction, companies believe they need to know not only your current interest, but what you have liked before, how old you are, your gender, where you live, how much education you have, and one and one. There are something like 500 hundred company that are able to check every move you make on the internet. Meaning the raw material. Oh, my, this is mining. Mining, mining, mining the raw material of the world and selling it to marketers. That you are overweight. <laughs> that means a car permit or two 
with historical novels, support Republicans, and spend a lot of time on airplanes is not only known to people other than yourself. It is of great monetary value to them as well. So to where you are and where you've been, as we recently learned when it was revealed that both Apple and Google have been checking mobile phone and tablet users and storing that information as well. Even reading device like Amazon's Kindle pay uh, attention. Kindle. Mm -hmm. Kindle. Kindle. Pay attention to what users are doing. I like a passage in a Kindle book, and the passage is sent back to Amazon. Clearly, the potential for privacy and other civil liberty abuse here is vast. And if marketing companies can do this, why not political candidates, the government, or companies that want to sway public opinion? Very good, very good, very good. All right. <clears throat> so um, let's do the same thing, except I won't talk as much. I gave like a history of what the internet was on the first paragraph. I'm not going to do that here. In a few words, who could describe what this paragraph is about that Marie just read? Anybody want to give it a shot? It starts off targeted ads and then talks about ways that personal information can be used. So what's this paragraph about? Just uh, a few words, who could describe it? A little can summary. Can I try? Yeah, go for it, Alessi. Um, so I think it talks about how powerful this um, online companies have can um, be mm -hmm. when it's, um, related to um, dig information about uh, people. So they target at using information that you put on the internet. For example, first your name, your picture, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, yep. uh, information, everything about yourself, how you mm -hmm. feel, for example, you put, ah, I'm sad today. And then, for example, you you said today, and then you go on the the certain um, the the Chrome, for example, mm -hmm. and yeah. you tap something nostalgic, mm. and they um, they filter all this information, and they um, send ads related to those things. Um, yes. So it's a very <laughs> dangerous thing mm -hmm. because sometimes you're feeling bad, not feeling good, and then they send you more things to make you to put you, to make you feel uh, worse, and then they can use that to sell you products. Mm. Yeah. And for example, I'm I'm very um, attentive to these things because I'm st I study marketing and. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for example, sometimes uh, I, I finish a yoga um, session mm -hmm. and then comes an ad of uh, McDonald's. <laughs> 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 and, uh, oh I yeah, that's a great way to stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes, they, they kind of have power over our mind if, if you're not, um, if we are not, um, we don't have attention, um, so they can do a lot. So I think it's yeah. it's it kind of this control, mind control, yes. And that's the title of the article. I can tell you <laughs> exactly. really did your homework, for Alessi. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> let's um, let's move. Very good. Uh, let's go on to Tatiana. Are you ready? Yes. Sure. All right. So paragraph three. Facebook. You. Yeah. Uh, you know what? One thing I know I should point out this this article. Uh, it has very relevant information, but uh, it's about eight years old. <clears throat> so there's um, uh, the conversation about personal information ha has evolved a little bit. 
So um, there are a lot more people thinking and talking about this pro these problems than there, than there were when this article was first written. One thing to keep in mind. And a lot of companies have also made a few changes uh, that, and, then, and I'll, we'll talk about that in future. We'll, we'll spend some time with this chapter in, uh, after the holiday as well. We're not gonna rush through it. It's a great chapter. All right, Tatiana, go for it. Okay. The boy you have to be on the light button for a product might trigger the appearance of an uh, ad for the mm -hmm. product on the pages, pages of their friends. Companies like Twitter, what? I have no idea what this is. Okay. Twitter Twitter analyzer and cloud. Yeah. Yeah, okay. analyze okay. and cloud analyze data from Twitter, Facebook, and link linker in LinkedIn. LinkedIn to determine oh, who has the, the most yeah who has the most influence online and sell the information to business that entice the influencers to pitch their products mm -hmm. to pitch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, and Rexy, are you ready? Yeah. The paradox. The paradox of personal, personal, personalization. personalization and the self expression promoted by the internet through Twitter, Facebook. Through Twitter, yeah. And event shout troll it is that it's simultaneous. Simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously mm -hmm. diminishes the value value of personhood and individuality. Mm. It becoming that accompany many blog posts and articles, and it is overwhelming. Overwhelmingly, mm -hmm. evident that. Violating dignity. Uh, violating. Be violating. Violating dignity. Violating dignity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone else and therefore one's own is a cheap and widely circulated uh, current. Currency. This, Good. This is not only true for subject that mind ordinary. Ordinarily, in seat, inside, inside, parting, sonship, and passion, like a sport or poly, politic, but for pretty much anything. Well done, Norexi. You chose the paragraph where I think a lot, a lot of tricky words. Oh, I love that face. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. All right, uh, Faride, paragraph number five to take us home. Here we go. The point of, oh, I'll tell you how to say this one. Um, the point of ad hominem attacks. Okay. The point of ad hominem attacks is to take a sway up someone else character, else's character. To, to undermine their integrity. The hive mind created through our electronic connection necessarily odiates the individual in this that what makes is a collective consensus. Consciousness. Consciousness. <clears throat> Anonymity with anonymity. Anonymity with flourish when there is no individual accountability. Accountability. Accountability is one of its key features and behind its meanings, antipathic meanness, meanings, antipathic and cruelty have a tendency to rush right in. Rush right in. Very good. 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to switch back to my other camera here. And okay, leaving the page back to this camera. I'm going to bring my background up. Here we go. And I don't know why I was really in the mood for the first part of my background. I was really in the mood for Mexico. And now, okay, now I'm in Cambodia. All right. <clears throat> Running back my, uh, there you go. See, I told you I changed. I changed my country. Now I'm in Cambodia. All right. So if I turn off the background, it's just a boring wall. <clears throat> All right. So uh, raise your hand if you feel like you have experienced this. Um, the targeted ads, the information you give to you, you yourself put on the internet starts to allow companies to follow you and know you a little bit more closely than you might like. Has anyone experienced this? I think all of us. I'm expecting everybody to put their hand up. It's just, okay, great. <laughs> Who would like to share an experience like this? You're just a little dissatisfaction. You're unhappy. Why do they need to know that? Yeah, I get it. Thank you. That's everybody. Good... Yeah. Okay, total stranger wishing me happy birthday. Thank you. Who are you? Who's experienced this? Uh, Tatiana, would you like to share? Um, I think most of the comment is when, uh, for example, I put uh, uh, one search in, in Google, and the next uh, I received a publicity. Mm -hmm. And and for example, also when I go, I'm going to YouTube and I um I'm trying to look uh, some videos, and mm -hmm. the next uh, appears uh, um one video uh one video or one person talk about what, what I need or <laughs> offer me. <laughs> a service. You're not talking about my YouTube channel, is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> and and you know that uh, kind of the um, the videos talk about uh, influencers and I mm. think uh, like uh, follow me uh, click like something like that go go to my website and I and I think it's very hard because so uh, I don't know what kind of influencer or, or I think that the influencer is a kind of business because they, they searching for a better one. They do content and also they uh, offer things, service, and uh, the companies pay to these uh, influencers to yes. to sell things for us. And I say, oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, great. Who else can share? Who has experienced this? Uh, Tatiana. Oh, I'm sorry. Tatiana just finished. Um, <laughs> let's hear from somebody else. I thought I, it was Tatiana turned her camera off and then I thought she raised her hand again. Um, Nerexi, would you like to share it? I'm just, I'm looking at your face. It seems like you, you have an idea that you want to yeah, share. But you can't I'm, tell us everything. I'm not sure what is the question. I understand but I'm not sure. Is I'll type it. I'll uh -huh. type it in the chat. I'll type it in the chat right now. Okay. I'll say it out loud and I'll type it in the chat. Okay. Okay. So after reading the article, has uh -huh. anyone experienced uh, dissatisfaction? And that means being unhappy with uh Companies knowing your personal information online. The, that's the topic of the article. And I just, so that's, I just put in simple words. Has anyone experienced dissatisfaction with companies knowing your personal information online? So for instance, it could be your, uh, it could be, I don't know, 
T-Mobile has your information. They give it to some, they give it to someone else. Google has, you put information into Google, uh, you're looking for a restaurant and then suddenly the same type of restaurant ads for the same type of restaurant show up when you go onto Instagram. And you know how it works. You know you gave them this information. You know you did this. Yes, I gave my information to the internet, but I can't function in society without doing, without using this. It's not like, and I, I dissatisfaction means you're not so happy that mm -hmm. these targeted ads are just showing up for you. Is that, so that's my question. Has anyone experienced dissatisfaction? And that's what Tatiana just shared with us. Uh, another example, uh, Alessi gave the example of uh, doing yoga, doing yoga on her own, and then she is bombarded with ads for fast food. Come on. Yeah, it yeah. happens a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, go share, share uh, Norexia, yeah. Yes, it's, it's wonderful um, uh, to have um, a anything, everything information about you you want or you don't want. Uh, you can choose what is um, what is you want. Um, so on the USA in your house, you can access. Everything. Uh, Dax is um, Dax is good, mm. but um, the problem is it's no it's not stop. You can stop. You can stop. You receive information, information, and and sometimes your personal information mm. uh, a gift or or a there is for everybody. So everybody can uh, access for your personal information. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's no, there is no ethic in the, the war, yeah, virtual information, you know? So yes. uh, when you have children, and kids, uh, you feel like, um, uh, como se dice, um, uh, it's no strong for uh, uh, each, you know, another mm. person that they, they not uh, prepare yes. for, Good choice the that's information so it's uh, it's good but it's not so good i think mm. yeah very good i'm so i uh excellent job and you did a great job at finding the words you were just looking for uh on short notice think thinking on your feet very nice norexi we're about to take a break but i'm going to give you a um a heads up for what we're going to do when we come back uh, when we come back, we're going to start out, we're going to continue this discussion, and uh, I'm going to show you a lecture by a, a professor. I'm only going to show you three minutes of it, only three minutes. Uh, the professor, is, her name is Jennifer Goldbeck. It's one of my favorite lectures about the internet. Um, and she tells a story about how the company Target uh, knew that a 15 year old girl was pregnant before she told her family. So think about this. Imagine you're a young girl, you're a teenager, you're pregnant. <laughs> this is very, very personal information. She's thinking, what do I do? Do I tell my family? What's the, uh, all that stress going on in her life as a young girl? And then suddenly, she gets ads for diapers. She gets ads for cribs. She gets ads for all this baby stuff. Yeah. How did Target know she was pregnant? <laughs> Think about it. Wow. 
And then all of a sudden her parents find yeah. these ads and they're actually mailed to their home. This 15% uh, off, uh, you know, baby bottles or something. And her parents are saying, hey, is this something you want to talk to us about? Can you imagine? <laughs> Yeah. So that's a, that's what a story we're going to look at when we come back. Okay. But think about it. I want everybody to think, okay. we're going to take a 10 minute break. How is it that a company like Target would know this very, very personal information about a young lady before she told anyone in her family? How would the company know? Hmm. Think about uh, it. Yes. About it. And we, we'll share when we come back. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to go to the stopwatch. We'll take our 10 minute break. There we go. Okay, stopwatch. Ten minutes. All right. Okay, everybody, see you in 10 minutes. Bye bye.
in order to readjust for sound and video here. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to play just a few minutes of this and I'll ask everybody in the breakout rooms to discuss this question. How did Target know that a 15 year old girl was pregnant before she told her family? So think about it. And then I'm going to pause the video before you find the answer. Then I'm going to put you into breakout rooms and everybody will try to, dis to guess. Everybody ready? Yes, ready to go. Okay, here it comes. If you remember that first decade of the web, it was really a static place. You could go online, you could look at pages, and they were put up either by organizations who had teams to do it, or by individuals who were really tech savvy for the time. And with the rise of social media and social networks in the early 2000s, the web was completely changed to a place where now the vast majority of content we, near, we interact with is put up by average users, either in YouTube videos or blog posts or product reviews or social media postings. And it's also become a much more interactive place where people are interacting with others, they're commenting, they're sharing, they're not just reading. So Facebook's not the only place you can do this, but it's the biggest, and it serves to illustrate the numbers. Facebook has 1.2 billion users per month. So half the Earth's internet population is using Facebook. They're a site, along with others, that's allowed people to create an online persona with very little technical skill. And people responded by putting huge amounts of personal data online. So the result is that we have behavioral, preference, demographic data for hundreds of millions of people, which is unprecedented in history. And as a computer scientist, what this means is that I've been able to build models that can predict all sorts of hidden attributes for all of you that you don't even know you're sharing information about. As scientists, we use that to help the way people interact online, but there's less altruistic applications. And there's a problem in that users don't really understand these techniques and how they work. And even if they did, they don't have a lot of control over it. So what I want to talk to you about today is some of these things that we're able to do and then give us some ideas of how we might go forward to move some control back into the hands of users. So this is Target the company. I didn't just put that logo on this poor pregnant woman's belly. You may have seen this anecdote that was printed in Forbes magazine where Target sent a flyer to this 15-year-old girl with advertisements and coupons for baby bottles and diapers and cribs two weeks before she told her parents that she was pregnant. Yeah, the dad was really upset. Uh, so how did Target figure out that this high school girl was pregnant before she told her parents? Okay, there it is. So that's all I'm going to show you right now. The question is, how did Target know that a 15-year-old girl was pregnant before she told her family? So I want everybody to go into a breakout room and try to figure it out. Put your marketing head on. Hmm. How would this company know all this very personal information? Hmm. How is it possible? What are the ways they could find out? So here we go. Breakout room time. Discuss with one another. Think of all the possible ways this company could figure out this information. Here we go. Okay, today, let's see. We have, look at the number of people. I think uh, two breakout rooms will be good. All right, everybody share. Does every, first, before I send you to breakout rooms, does everybody understand the question? Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to, so I don't want to go into a breakout room and then everyone's going, huh, what are we talking about? What? what? Everybody knows what, you, what you're doing, right? Okay, here we go. So try to discuss with one another, how did Target know a 15-year-old girl was pregnant before she told her family? Here we go, breakout room time.
Actually, you know what? I'm going to make three. Hold on a second. I'm going to make three breakout rooms. Three. Okay. Now try. Three breakout rooms. Perfect. Small enough groups. All right. Go. Go. Hi, Nerexi. Hey, Nerexi, <clears throat> do you see the sign that says click join? Hey, Norexia, are you there? Okay, so the first guess is that her search history revealed it. Second guess is she downloaded an app, okay? Downloaded an app regarding new, new moms or something like that. Downloaded app, okay? Good guess. All right, uh, she, let's get a few more guesses. She both she bought a test, uh, pregnant, pregnant test, and bought pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. She bought pregnancy test. Okay. Any other guesses? I thought. Uh... She, she said she share some information about with a friend and target keep, keep them. Like she just told her friends. She or? share by email. Okay, so so she emailed a friend. Okay, so target read her emails. Okay. Yeah. Emails. Okay. Any other guesses? Oh, um, Handy, you're muted. What were you saying? And keep talking with your friends about that, about the do, do you mean like she told her friends face to face or what? She, she sent the message for, for send the message. What, like on WhatsApp or Instagram or something? But she, uh, I think she had, she had, app on her phone and mm -hmm. she 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 sent message for uh, a close friend okay say that uh, and that's what i mean or uh, no i'm asking like how we were so maybe like social media she put it on um instagram or something i'm asking you what is your guess handy um um, she, uh, maybe she tried to explain your, your best one about the situation. Okay. So she, like a text message? Yes, yeah, text message. Okay, so texted a friend. All right, good Teacher. guess. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe she making appointment to the hospital through the phone, to the app. Ah, hospital. Like, oh, my chart, right? Yeah, like my chart. Yeah, my chart, very good. Yeah, because in some time you can make an appointment through my chart or, to, or you will send a test to the doctor what happened. My chart, appointment, good. Let's keep going, there's a lot of good guesses here. He find a video and, and Google 
about the pregnant. Okay, she searched, so she watched pregnancy, she, she went on YouTube and watched the pregnancy videos. Yeah. YouTube history, okay. Good guess. Any more? Okay, this is absolutely fantastic. So the guesses we have, search history, uh, that she downloaded an app, she bought a pregnancy test, she went on my chart, or she uh, YouTube pregnancy videos, she emailed a friend, she texted a friend, somehow Target got that information and sent her uh, ads for baby bottles. Okay. One of you is pretty close, but not exactly right. So here is exactly how they did it. Whoops. One of you is very, very close, but it's a little more complicated. So this is how they did it. Okay. So here we go. Huge amounts of personal data online. So the result is that we have behavioral, preference, demographic data for hundreds of millions of people, which is unprecedented in history. And as a computer scientist, what this means is that I've been able to build models that can predict all sorts of hidden attributes for all of you that you don't even know you're sharing information about. As scientists, we use that to help the way people interact online, but there's less altruistic applications. And there's a problem in that users don't really understand these techniques and how they work. And even if they did, they don't have a lot of control over it. So what I want to talk to you about today is some of these things that we're able to do and then give us some ideas of how we might go forward to move some control back into the hands of users. So this is Target the company. I didn't just put that logo on this poor pregnant woman's belly. You may have seen this anecdote that was printed in Forbes magazine where Target sent a flyer to this 15-year-old girl with advertisements and coupons for baby bottles and diapers and cribs two weeks before she told her parents that she was pregnant. Yeah, the dad was really upset. Uh, so how did Target know the girl was pregnant before she told her family? After all the breakout rooms, everyone's come up with some good guesses. Her internet search history. She downloaded an app for new moms. She bought a pregnancy test. She went on my chart, YouTube history emails, or she texted a friend. One of you is very, very close. And I'll tell you which one it is. I'm going to erase the others. It's not my chart. It's not YouTube history. It's not emails. It's not texting a friend. It's not downloading an app for new moms. Uh, it, and it's not her search history. Uh, this one is the closest. Bought, oh, I put the T, forgot the T and bought. Bought a pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. It is related to her shopping habit. But she didn't buy a pregnancy test. Target knew she was pregnant based on something else that she bought. And this is where it gets really fascinating. So how did Target figure out that this high school girl was pregnant before she told her parents? It turns out that they have the purchase history for hundreds of thousands of customers, and they compute what they call a pregnancy score, which is not just whether or not a woman's pregnant, but what her due date is. And they compute that not by looking at like the obvious things, like she's buying a crib or baby clothes, but things like she bought more vitamins than she normally had or she bought a handbag that's big enough to hold diapers. And by themselves, those purchases don't seem like they might reveal a lot, but it's a, a pattern of behavior that when you take it in the context of thousands of other people, starts to actually reveal some insights. So that's the kind of thing that we do when we're predicting stuff about you on social media. We're looking for little patterns of behavior that when you detect them among millions of people, lets us find out all kinds of things. So the rest of her speech uh, talks about how uh, data scientists collect information. It doesn't seem obvious, but if you gather, <clears throat> gather all these little bits of information, you can predict certain things about people. And... Uh, because of this young lady's shopping habits, not obvious things like crib or baby bottles, but uh, 
one thing, one thing, one thing, they computed a pregnancy score and they said, yep, she's probably pregnant and sent her ads for diapers. But she, she, she cannot, she can, uh, she can buy them for another person, I think. She could, she could very well. But in this case, the company's uh, system was, was accurate. Mm -hmm. It's very likely. How often do you get ads that don't make any sense? Sometimes you'll get ads thrown at you that don't make any sense at all. Like, why would they send that to me? Of temptation. I yeah. Yeah. And th in this case, the ads were correct. Yes, she, she was actually pregnant. They, they were right. So yeah, we're gonna use this, I think a little bit more on Wednesday, the re we'll use the rest of it, but I wanted to show this first three, three minutes and 20 seconds today, just for a little exercise. I hope you liked it, I hope that was fun. Yeah. Good. Yes. So yeah, I, I like this lady, her name is Jennifer Goldbeck. She's a, she's a data scientist and professor at the University of Maryland. And you can, you, can, you can Google her and find out all of her personal information just for fun. And see yeah. what you can learn about it before Wednesday. We listen to the rest of her speech. Uh, yeah, she's very, does a lot of really good work, University of Maryland. Anyway, so uh, I'll show you what we're going to do ahead of the holiday. I've got two assignments posted that are not due immediately. They're due way, way, way later. But, and they're very, very simple. It's really just wrapping up the end of semester. And then we'll do a little bit of exercise with chapter three vocab to review, and that will wrap up the class. So let's go back to Google Classroom. Here we go. Okay. All right. So uh, these are two, you can see right here, these are two. Uh, this is the assignment that we already, we went over today. It was just a, um, worksheet after the essay we read together that was due today most of you got that in excellent job and upcoming assignments are not due for a while a while so you've got plenty of time just wanted to go over them now so april 27th resume time here we go all right so attached is a blank resume template if you already have a resume, you may use it. Time to update your resume and use some vocabulary attached in the list below. You might remember this if you were in level five uh, last semester. I do this same exercise with level six. So <laughs> in level six, you, you'll see me do this again. <laughs> so always uh, before we have the resume workshop, I, I do this assignment. So 185 action verbs. Well, all verbs are action verbs, but really good verbs to use on a resume get familiar with them here is a uh, a video of a class i taught previously about resume writing that you can review and then a blank resume template if you don't have a resume a resume is a cv uh, curriculum vitae cv so uh yes I'd like to get everybody to update their cvs their resumes every semester and it's that time and you got plenty of time to think about it April 27th. So that's the end of the month. It's about two weeks from now. The following week, uh, end of semester evaluations, uh, simple questions, very simple form. Very, very, very simple. Uh, how do you feel about the device you're using? I think, Handy, you have a new, your new computer I can see with the bigger, wider screen you're joining us from. Oh. I didn't have the computer today. I, don't know. I just said you've got a new computer, right? He just said me. He thought he, he wiped me, but he just said me. That's a yes or no? I can't quite hear. No. No. Oh, you're not using your new computer? No, I'm, I, I didn't have it. He wiped oh. me. He checked, he checked me about that, but I didn't have it. Oh, you, you, so what are you using right now? My phone. You're still on your phone right now? Yes. Okay. It's you've got a wider screen right now. I was okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, anyway. Um, 
What device do you use to complete with your assignments? Uh, what are some of your personal and professional goals? Um, do you need any uh, services for Catholic charities that can provide? What uh, was a lesson from your uh, this course that you feel uh, interested uh, worked? I need to actually change that, not the summer course, the spring course. I need to change that. Uh, and that's about it. So that'll be due uh, in three weeks. We do this at the end of every semester. Uh, so yeah, that's what's coming up. And here's the last thing we're going to do today. All of the chapter three vocabulary. All right, we're not going to play the full game of Typhoon today, but uh, we will do a little bit. We'll look at the chart. We'll do a little bit of um, a taboo exercise. I will text one word to one <clears throat> classmate and somebody else will try to guess. So we have, we'll, we'll need two volunteers. Uh, Tavares, would you like to, would you like to join to play with us? Yes. All right, so I have Tavares. And uh, let's see. Natalia, you want to give it a shot? I try. Okay, Natalia. All right. Okay. So, Tavares, you will describe a word. Um, You will describe, I'll text you the word. I'll text it to you on your phone. You will describe a word and Natalia, you try to guess what it is. I'll give an example. So let's say, um, the word consensus is gathering everybody's opinion. <clears throat> so if I, if I'm asking Natalia to guess the word consensus, I'll say, questioning many people what they think and Natalia says consensus so Tavares I'm going to give you the word on I'm going to text it to you on your phone and then you will try to describe it and Natalia will guess what it is are you ready Tavares okay I'm ready yeah. okay here we go so take a look at your phone I'm going to text you the word right now it's one of these words on the screen Okay, I sent it to you, Tavares. Yeah, master. Oh, don't tell you. Oh, don't oh, say no. it. Okay, oh, I'm gonna I'm send sorry. you a different word. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. okay. All right, I'm gonna send you a different word. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, teacher. Okay. Yes. Okay, you need help, Tavares? No, no. Um, uh, I, I am a fiscal. Oh, you can't say the word. You can't say the word. Okay, uh, let's okay. try. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Uh, um, uh, let's. Anybody else want to want to try to describe the word? Can I try? Okay, yep. Alessi. Okay, Alessi, I'm going to text you a word. 
And Natalia, mm -hmm. you're going to guess. Here we go. So you just uh, text me the word and... Yes. I'm going to text you the word and you will try to describe the word and Natalia will guess what it is. Oh, so here okay. We go. Got it. Yep. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's... let's see. Here we go. Okay, just sent it to you. Mm, okay. You want me to go now, you say? Oh, yes, please. Okay. So, something that is... Um, Something that has been uh, something that it's um, being talking about, being um, um, let me think. There's a second. I'll send you a definition if you like. I'm trying to. <laughs> So to define it, but something that's being talked about a lot. That's that's a good mm -hmm. definition. Talk it. Um, Interested about um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that? pretty good. Something people are talking about. Okay, Natalia, can you guess? No, teacher. It's, it's one <laughs> of the words. It's one of the words on the chart. Chart. Uh, can you fry it in the chat here and then um, soon? Well, I, I'm only, I only gave it to, I only gave it to Alessi. So she, she's the one. I just gave, Alessi, I just gave you the definition. Mm -hmm. Read the definition. Yeah. Yes. You want me to read the definition? That's the only way Natalia can guess it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because. <laughs> if you don't tell her, yeah. she can't guess it. <laughs> It's a, it's a general direction in which something is developing or changing. Yes, okay. Or is a fashion. Yes, fashion, good. Oh. Which one is it, Natalia? I think Norexi um, knows. Natalia, are you sure you don't want to guess? Sure, I don't know. Okay, Norexi, give it a shot. What is it? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, you got it. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so everybody practice a little more of this and we'll play a, another game on Wednesday. Bye bye, right. everybody. We're a little over time. Bye. That's Thank okay. you so much. Bye bye. Yes. Thank you. All. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much.